Number two. Spawning in the bottom left side of the map. He's looking for a comeback. He's down 0 1. Play for Dead Pixels. It's Patience. In the top right, as the Red Zerg, it is true. <coughs> and, uh, you know, it was high win rate on this map. I guess you don't have the actual stats. I don't know some people getting the yeah, stats. Yeah, what, what are we, try hard GSL? Like, <laughs> Jesus, come on now. Uh, but it can, of course, be attributed to just, um, Fast three bases. Fast four bases. Well, safe four bases, I should say, anyways. Uh, and uh, it looks like the later the game goes, the more it favors Zerk, who have that late game tech that was buffed so early on in Legacy of the Void and was not actually controlled afterwards. <laughs> like, they, uh, that's been the case for quite a while. You know what it is. It just, they never bother changing it. What? I think Narud is an actual person. Why? Because he does all the weird experiments with the races and things, and somehow he got in the balance team. Ah, oh, I got in the balance team. Oh, I see what you're doing. I see you. David Kim's actually like a, uh, whatchamacallit. Oh, Anyways. true. Classic hatchery block. Do it. So, the minerals. <coughs> Never mind. actually, it's very, it's pretty interesting because you might be saying, well, they don't do that anymore, but True had that one in Lima League where he did it like five times. Yeah. So It proved to not be too ineffective. Yeah, he lost one game pretty badly because uh, it wasn't effective. But the other ones actually weren't so bad still. So he's gonna gas seal. <laughs> he right. did try and do this in game one, uh, yeah, but patience shut him down. I remember. So uh, that's a little annoying, especially because I could just cancel and continue to scout too if you really wanted. But he'll probably let it finish, not bother with it anymore. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to do that? <sighs> Excuse me. It's up to you. Uh, hello, hype man Q. Shout out to Boston. Shout out to Bastion. I, I I'm. Boston's cool, I suppose. I've been there before. Pass through it. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, it wasn't as, but I'm gonna shout out Canada. The rest of Canada. Anyone from BC tuning in? Hometown heroes? Okay. Actually, funny enough, the time, like right now, is about when the Elima League would normally be starting for me. Ah. So, uh, True does get away with the faster third hatch. I think I was talking about. Um. <clears throat> Uh, not too much for Protoss to do unless they do scout that like fairly early and try to put that thrown on pylons and uh, kind of rush out the adept, but not the case. So Patience just kind of lets it go and will be getting his own macker up. He might also be looking towards his First own fast one. third. Uh, we've been seeing yeah. more and more often like two base builds not work out, like last game didn't work out. That was the adept bug. Yeah. Um, so we've been seeing some three base uh, all-ins work out where you cut, you cut it like 54 something like that and you do a nice big push and that is something you can do on Dust Towers. You can get that third base uh, pretty quickly, especially if you scout the Zerg being greedy. Uh, a couple of kills here and there. Oh, maybe not. One. Two. It's like a magic trick, just disappear. Three? Oh my god, that'd be the Three? sickest. That'd be the sickest skin for adepts, like a like a like a tuxedo cliche like <laughs> magician thing. You're like, that would be now good. you see me, and now you don't. I wonder, you know what else like, you could buy? You could buy like, uh, you know how they have the special voices if you come too much. They should get more special voices. Oh, the Easter egg thing, like when you click. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, if you bought it, she would actually say like, now you see me. So <laughs> there's. Uh, for those who don't know, unfortunately, when we play Archon mode right now, all the sounds that this computer hears gets transmitted through Skype. So when Zombiegob and I were doing Archon mode, I guess she doesn't normally do this. I go super ADD bored because there's nothing for me to do in the early game as a micro player, and I click on the SCVs a bunch. So I start going through the Easter eggs, and she's like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, I uh, I really don't <coughs> spam click on my, on my units, so that was a new experience for me. I, I do love that's probably my favorite thing. Consistent since like the first Blizzard game where you click on the unit button, you get like a, a funny little sound. Lazy man should run past and right through this. The sentry finds a nice little corner to sort of hide in, however, Aww. but the force will be burned, it is going to die. Sacrifices itself essentially to save a lot of these probes. You tried, buddy. Sorry, a little mistake from patience setting those in. That's uh, fairly annoying. There wasn't much to scout beyond that third base, at least not yet. Yeah. If he had come like a minute and a half, two minutes later, would have seen like a tech go down, how many gateways there were. Um, maybe you would have seen if third was saturated or not, or probes were transferring over. But uh, just gets a little bit of annoying harass done. There's going to be 12 counts on a robo, which is the bread and butter of Protoss, so not very surprising. I guess we still have some Stargate builds, but 
That would have been a lot earlier. And Patience does get his third base down, so it's officially like this macro game, and they both were like, okay, we can both get three bases, and of course, True wants to get to four, so you still want to be up one mm. as, as Zerg. And, um, well, Patience with such late tech, I don't think is going to have too big of a push, but this Adept push, I guess you could call it, so they six Adepts, uh, harassment, whatever you want to say, it comes in against such a surprising time that True is not prepared for it. And Patience already demonstrated he's pretty good at dancing through the mineral lines. This is a position here to defend, gets by another mineral line with about five of those six Adepts, and... Yeah. There's enough links now. He was starting to get links, I guess, to try and just dart in and out of the third base and, and take care of attacks like this, but they came just a little bit late. So while Patience didn't get much damage done with those attacks, they did get into the main base in the natural, so they got some decent scouting, but like True, it was actually just like 10, 15 seconds too too soon. He misses the scout on the uh, Hydrogen and the Spire. So yeah, the, the I think the less about the hydrogen and more about that spire because once again it's these weird air transitions that are catching a lot of Protoss players off guard. Uh, it was really disappointing during the DreamHack stuff that we covered too. You saw Showtime do all these, all these tremendous like try to predict the air moves and they were never enough. Like the problem is like Impatience is doing this. He knows just the way the flow of the matchup goes. I feel it's it's so difficult for Protoss to respond to what Zerg does nowadays. Like, it's really hard to be like, look, I've got all my anti-air covered, boom, Zerg just goes ground, and vice versa. Yeah. Like, the tech swap is the strength of what Zerg has with the way its larva mechanic works and blah, blah, blah. But it, it is something that we're seeing, for whatever reason, Protoss struggle with more now than the entire history of Hots and Wings of Liberty combined. I think a lot of it just has to do with the timing still being relatively new, like the flow of the game, they're still feeling it out. Is, uh, this isn't what they always have to deal with, although it is certainly something that they have to be scared of, just like they were in Heart of the Swarm. And they'll get better at predicting the switches between air and ground, but there's also just the fact that there is more to a Zerg than there was in Heart of the Swarm, you know? Like, it's no longer like, well, I guess they can maybe go to Broodlords, and Broodlords are kind of difficult to deal with, but I guess I'll go Tempest, and that's fine. It's, oh god, they may go for Ultras, and Ultras are actually kind of good, so I'll try and go back into Ground, and then they go back into Mutas. They have Lurkers now to add on to their Ground, which require a lot more Micro uh, to push out against, or even defend against, actually, as opposed to just getting that big Protoss bulk army and then kind of aim moving, as, uh, you know, just making sure the Phoenix didn't die to the Mutas. Uh, by the way, Hayasus donates five dollars to the stream with a rather long message, so I'll, I'll wait till the game's over to read that out. But uh, this push out of patience, I actually like quite a bit. Now the Phoenix is unfortunately get kind of wrecked right away. The Archon will keep the Mutus from being able to bulk up on top of this, but it's so good to see Zealots, no charge. But the Zealots are going to be such a good, strong force to versus these links. However, on the wrong side of the fight, the Stalkers need to be alive to shoot these Mutas. Um, I'm going to target that Warpers and take it off the Phoenixes, but they are getting top on the Phoenixes and they're still the going down here. The Archon missed the opportunity to catch them they were balled ah. up. It's a couple of decent shots now. But yeah, the, the, the Warpers going down is pretty devastating. But the Patience comes out with so much of his army still alive after that fight. Yeah. Now he's losing most of his anti-air, oh, but he does take out the fourth base, and he's still on three bases himself, with the potential to go fourth base, actually there it goes right now. Uh, so this was not a bad push at all, it was a very well-timed yes. push, before the Nidas were too big in number, before the Nidas got the time to initiate a base trade as well, they were obviously on true side of the map, so that ended up being pretty good. That one Archon is really scary for true. But at the same time, Patience has such a limited amount of anti-air. Yeah, he does have to be very careful. I mean, like, this push was initially good, but you got to be careful not to just be overwhelmed and lose out on, on army. Um, so, his Phoenixes are rallying, though, and that's certainly helping him not be overwhelmed. Uh, maybe a new War Prism will come over at some point. Actually, yeah, it's being built right now, uh -huh. and uh, Sagas is just walking across the map to him. I'm starting to get a little worried for True. I mean, for a moment, yeah. it looked like he had just absolute domination, but... These mutas can't quite get in here. The stalker cast is going to keep getting higher and higher. The other of course, here for potential recall if necessary. This is looking quite bad, and uh, true, who would. That's a lot of stalkers surprising from the reinforcement point. And the, the last ditch, you know, attempt for a muta player would be just a base trade, especially if they were allowed to get up to 25 or 30 mutas. Yeah. Uh, so patience. Ask Penguin about that. Yeah, patience was never allowed to get up, or never allowed. True to get up to a very high number of Vitas. Plus, he always had that two gate, pro oh. uh, two star gate production. So this is actually, it looks like Patience is going to win, even though True is trying his best to micro the wins here and there. Yeah, the Archon going down was pretty scary for a moment, but it looks like the Stalkers, without Blink, without a lot of upgrades, there's still just enough to 
brutally take on these mutas. They're starting to disappear a little too quick. The Adepts and the Zealots doing their job on the other side, keeping any sort of links off the Stalkers. But even then, like, while the mutas might clean this up, the amount of mutas left over isn't really yeah. enough to deal with so many Zealots. He would need to clean this up and then immediately counterattack and depower the Stargates. And probably even the Warp Gates, too, because Patience got that fourth oh base. God. He's had a very he, good economy. He just cleaned house. Yeah, he could warp in, you know, ten Stalkers and still be okay. So this was just a... Good game. This was really well-timed by Patience. Timing, but also execution. Really well done out of patience. Uh, tying this up now 1-1. Uh, it has